Hey, what's up guys? It's Pedro here from NoobCoder.com. And in this tutorial, we are going to be going over fetching data for our component using the component that mount lifecycle method. All right, so to get started, what we've been doing so far is if I come within our state, we've usually declared some kind of property and I'll just call this data and we can set this to an array. And we've been basically hard coding this data. Now this is all fine and dandy, but what I want to do is what happens if I don't have the data beforehand? What happens if I need to go out and go fetch that data from our server or an external API? So let us get rid of this. And what we can do is come down here and let's go ahead and create that function. So we're going to say component did mount. And this function is only going to get invoked once our component is mounted, hence the name component didn't mount. So in other words, this function is going to get executed after the render method. So to prove this, let's go ahead and make a print statement, render method called. And within this mount, we could call another log and say component did mount. Let's go ahead and save this. We'll take a look at this in the browser and there you go. So I refresh, you'll see that our render method gets called. So now our component is mounted and then our component that mount function gets invoked. So this is the place where react suggests you make API calls in. Okay. So now what I can do is we could go to this website and I'll have a link to this site within the description. So don't worry about that. And basically this is where we can make a request and we get a response back. So what we can do is let's go ahead and go to the guide and they have tons of examples. And what we want is an array. So we could just go ahead and use this and I don't need to copy the output. We'll just copy this. We can go back to our React application and within our component that mount function, we can make this fetch request. Okay, so what I want to do is I'm just going to change this from JSON to data. And we're just going to print out data. Okay, so if you never work with the fetch API, Basically, you call fetch like this. This is a built-in API, so you don't have to download an external library or anything. You give it the endpoint you want to hit. This part is going to return a promise. So in order to invoke that promise, you would call the then method. What you're going to do is get back a response from the server. We're going to say response.json, and this is also going to return a promise but this is basically going to convert this JSON object into a JavaScript object so we could manipulate it. And then we'll just get back the data. So, and then we'll go ahead and print that data out onto the console. So let us save this. Let's take a look at this in the browser. And there you go. So here we have our data being fetched. So our render method gets called. Then our component that mount gets executed. And here is all the data. Now, if you don't like working with promises like this, what we can do is instead of doing it like this, we can use async and await. So I'll just comment this out. And instead we could declare async before our component did mount. And now we could use await within this function. So what I can do is we could use a try catch block. And within here, we need our endpoint. So this endpoint here is going to return a promise. And since this is a promise, we could use await. And let's go ahead and save this within a variable. We'll call this response. Next, we'll create another variable called data. And once again, we could say response.json. This also is a promise, so we could use await again, store that within data, 
And for now, we'll just print out the data once again. So if I save this, we should get the same exact result. So I'm just going to refresh just to make sure. And there you go. So we get the same exact result. So you could do it either way that you would like to. Okay. All right. So now that we have our data, let's go ahead and display it. So let's go back to our editor. And what we can do is this data is a little bit too much for my liking. So this is an array of 100 and I want to bring it down to an array of 10, for example. So what we can do is first we need to set the state since we get our data back. So we'll say data and instead of passing the whole thing, I'll just say data dot splice. And I want the first 10 elements within that array. Okay, so now if I save this, take a look at it in the browser, you can see how our lifecycle methods are working. So first our render methods called, then our component did mount is called, and then the render method gets invoked again when we call the set state. So now what we can do is let's go ahead and print out this array. So let's go ahead and make an unordered list. And what we're going to do is map over our data. So let us actually pull this out from the state. And we will just map over it. Oops, it's supposed to be data, not that. And we'll just go ahead and map over it. So we'll get back a function. And we'll just call this item. Let's go ahead and put these within li elements. So I believe that for a key, it has an ID. So we'll just say item.id. And we'll just output item.body. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this. Take a look at it in the browser. And there you go. So here is all our items. So where I got item.id is obviously uh, just looking at what each of these objects have. So we have ID and then we have body, which is being printed out right now. So now let us go over what happens if it takes a while for your data to be fetched. So right now it loads pretty fast. But what we can do is let's go ahead and come up here. We'll give another property and we'll check to see if it is loaded. So we'll set that to false as an initial value. So now what we can do is we could come down here. And when we call this dot set state, we can say the data has loaded. So we'll set this to true. And I probably should put this within the object. So is loaded and we'll just set that to true. And now what I want to do is display a loading screen or a loading div, if you want to call it that when it's loading and output the data when it's done loading. So we could pull out is loaded. And instead of just outputting this unordered list, what we can do is check to see if it's loaded or not. If it isn't loaded, so we'll just negate this. What we want to do is display a div that says loading. And if it is loaded, what we'll do is display our unordered list. So let's just go ahead, copy this, paste this in here. And there you go. So now if I save this, take a look at it in the browser. You see that this is pretty much loaded instantly. You kind of see the loading screen and then you see our data. But let's try to simulate this even more. So let's say that this data takes three seconds to fetch. So what we can do is let's go ahead and wrap this within a set timeout. And we'll say that this is going to execute in three seconds. So now let's go ahead and save this. Take a look at it in the browser. Let's hit refresh. And 
there you go. All right, so we have our loading screen and then our data gets shown. So that is pretty much all I wanted to cover within this tutorial. And I'll see you guys in the next one.